Okay, so uh, to show that our functions are convex, uh, let's recall the theorem for single variate functions. If a single variate function is twice differentiable, then we know the following three things. F is convex in a region if the second order derivative are non negative for all the x in this region. A point is an interior local mean only if the first order derivative is zero. Okay, this is a necessary condition. But if f is convex, then x star is a global mean if and only if f the second or the first order derivative is zero at that point. Okay, these are some things we already know. For multivariate functions, it's similar. F is convex in a region capital F. Okay, uh, here because we have multiple variables, so the feasible region is a subset of the R n space. Anyway, F is convex in the feasible region. If the this guy huh, is the Hessian matrix is positive semi-definite for all the x in this region. Okay, well, we will talk about positive semi-definite later. It's of course a generalization of non-negative second-order derivatives. And then, a point is an interior local mean only if the gradient is zero. Okay, this is an analog to this guy. Okay. When there is only one variable, we need the first order derivative to be zero. When there are multiple variables, we need all their, um, all their partial derivatives to be zero. Finally, if f is convex, then a point is a global mean, if and only if uh, the gradient is zero. Okay, uh, of course, these two things are just similar to the previous two things for single variate functions okay but for showing convexity we need more than just second order partial derivatives okay so let's focus on positive semi definite matrices a matrix or in particular hessian matrix Positive Hessian matrix as a real. A Hessian matrix is positive semi-definite if the following things happen. Okay? If a matrix is symmetric, then we say it is positive semi-definite if for all the x we have this non-negativity. X transpose times A times X is non-negative. Okay? Let's see what does that mean. For example, suppose I have this matrix A, then let's calculate x transpose AX. X is of course x1, x2. So x transpose AX can be shown to be da 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 da, -da like this. Oh, and if you need a derivation, x1, x2 times 2, 1, 1, 2 times x1, x2. Okay, like this. If you really uh, go over everything for multiplying the three matrices, you can see this exactly. And then we can see that for this particular expression, it can be expressed as the sum of three square terms. So this is of course non-negative, no matter what is your x. So this particular A matrix is positive semi-definite according to the definition. For another matrix A, uh, we have another x transpose AX. In this case, this may be negative. Okay? As long as we can find one example showing that it, the, the, the number is negative, then that matrix is not semi-definite, positive semi-definite. Okay? Our example is that x is 1 and the x2 is minus 1. If we plug in, this is 1, this is 1, this is negative 4. So this matrix A is not positive semi-definite. Given a function f, we want to sh check whether the Hessian matrix is positive semi-definite. If the Hessian matrix is positive semi-definite, then that function is convex. Right? Uh, so 
we need to have a way to show positive semi-definite uh, as a property. But we do not want to in apply the uh, the theory. Uh, the, sorry, we do not want to apply the definition because in general it may be hard. So there are several tools that we, we may use. For a symmetric matrix A, uh, we have the following equivalent statements. Either A is positive semi-definite. Uh, I mean, this is one possibility. Or A's eigenvalues are all non-negative. Or A's leading principal minors are all non-negative. These three things are the same. So, A is positive semi-definite. If and only if all the eigenvalues are non-negative. If and only if leading principal minors are all non-negative. Let's do a brief review. A's eigenvalues, let's call it lambda, and the associated eigenvector x will satisfy Ax equals lambda x. And this is the definition of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. For leading principal minors, oh, is the determinant of a upper left k by k submatrix. The first leading principal minor is the upper left corner number. Okay? Its determinant is itself. The second leading principal minor is the upper left two by two submatrix the determinant. Okay, so that's uh, the definition. So what we need to do is that given a function, what we want is to first calculate its Hessian. This can always be done, right? We just need to collect all the second order derivatives, and then we have the Hessian matrix, and then. We either find all its eigenvalues or all the leading principal minors. With them, we can show whether A is positive semi-definite or not, or determine a region over which the Hessian metric is positive semi-definite. Then over that region, the function is convex. A good thing is that this statement is if, if and only if. So if over a region or if at a point the Hessian matrix is not positive semi-definite, then that function is not convex at that point. Okay, so this is some uh, good news. For proposition 4, we're not going to prove it because uh, it's a linear algebra stuff. Okay, let's take it as, um, as given and uh, use it. Consider the following nonlinear program, blah, 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 where we have this particular f function. By drawing a figure, we can see, oh, indeed, this is um, convex. Okay, very good. And uh, if we uh, look at it carefully, the optimal solution is at around um, 1, 0, or 2, 0, okay, or somewhere here. So we expect later we first can show f is convex and then find its local mean, uh, find its global mean with the gradient uh, vector. Okay, so let's do this. First, I need to find the gradients and the Hessian. For gradient, I do first order derivatives. Okay, so take f, I do first order derivative, first order derivative. And then for gradient, for Hessian, I do second order derivatives. Let's try to find the eigenvalues of the Hessian. For eigenvalues, uh, let's review how may we find them. Ax equals lambda x. So a minus lambda i, oh, take, take the, the turn to the left hand side. a minus lambda i is going to multiply by x and the product must be zero. And then the determinant of a minus lambda i must be zero. Okay, this is something we know according to our knowledge. So, <coughs> given our Hessian matrix, we know uh, 2, 1, 1, 2 is our Hessian matrix. So minus lambda i, we get minus lambda i at all the diagonal um, elements. The, the, the determinant of this guy can be calculated as 3 minus 4 lambda plus lambda squared. And this must be 0. Solving this equality, we get lambda must be either 1 or 3. And that means the eigenvalues are 1 and 3. 
So they are all non-negative. So the function is convex. Or if we use the leading principle minors, the the the, the matrix itself is two one one two. Okay. So the first leading principle minor is the first element here. It's two, and its determinant, of course, is two. The second principal minor, a leading principal minor, is the matrix itself. So the determinant is three. So again, by leading principal minors, this is also showing that the matrix is convex. In general, if you have a three by three、uh, matrix, then you need to verify three submatrices and calculate their determinants. And show that their determinants are all non-negative. Okay, oh, but go back to our problem. We have shown that the matrix is positive semi-definite, and the Hessian is positive semi-definite, and therefore the function is convex, and therefore the minimizing the function can be done by the first-order condition. The first-order condition says that this guy and that guy, the Two partial derivatives must be zero. Okay, so that means we can solve these two equalities and then get an optimal solution zero two. Okay, now if you go back to check the figure, indeed, our optimal solution is at zero two.、Um, so we have applied、um, two properties or two theorems. One is the general generalization from single variate. Uh, nonlinear programs to multivariate nonlinear programs. A function is convex if the Hessian is positive semi-definite. Okay, this is something we used, but we did not prove it to you. Another thing is a function, a convex function, has its global mean at the point where the first-order condition is satisfied, where all the partial derivatives are non are zero. Again, we used it, okay, here, but we did not prove it to you. Also, for showing、um, positive semi-definite matrices,、uh, we used the theorem, but we did not prove to you. Proofs are not the important thing for this course. I only expect you to understand those、um, theorems, know how to use them, and know the concept behind. That's all. So let's conclude this、um, section by another example. Suppose I give you a function. Now this function is three-order function. Da 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 da. We want to show when is it convex or over what region is it convex. The first thing is to find its Hessian. Now the Hessian matrix is not a constant because it depends on the value of x one. Okay, but still,、uh, it can be expressed like this. So now we want to ask, when is the Hessian matrix positive semi-definite? If at a point the Hessian matrix is positive semi-definite, then at that point the function is convex. Or if at a point the Hessian is not positive semi-definite, then at that point the function is not convex. So if we use leading principle、uh, minors. The first one is the first element. Okay, so we need six x one to be non-negative. Or if we want to、uh, verify the second leading principal minors, then we can calculate the determinant, right? And then six x one minus sixteen must be non-negative. So combining these two, and these two must be satisfied together. So x one. Must be at least three, eight、uh, over three. If and only if x one is over this particular、uh, number, then the function is convex. So graphically, this is x one, this is x two. Somewhere we have three over eight, and at this region, f is convex. At another side, f is non-convex. Okay, according to our Uh, derivation. If we want to show a multivariate function is concave, how do we do that? Okay, technically we can show that Hessian matrix is negative semi-definite. Okay, with a very similar 
uh, definition. But you don't need to worry about it too much, right? You just need to show that the negation of that function is convex. So you first get a function. You negate that function. And then you show the negation is convex oh, through positive semi-definite matrices. And if that can be done, then the original function is concave. Oh, that's the general rule. Okay, so that's the end of the first part. Thank you.